why objects don't satisfy us they're temporary even the ones that last like maybe a relationship with a person they change so you might meet somebody but they might change you might you might change you might buy a house that's your dream house and houses usually they can last a long time, right? Maybe more than a human lifetime. So even though it's temporary, you might say, well, I don't mind if it's temporary because it will probably last longer than I live. But you might change. You might This house that you once loved, well, you might not love it so much anymore. And you get tolerance. I've told some of you a story before when I went in ho on holiday once. And I was, I, it was in Italy. And went and it was this amazing place. And I remember having dinner in this restaurant, and it was not, we're outdoors, and we're surrounded by we could see the sea on one side and the beach, and you could see these mountains on the other side. It's beautiful, scenery, beautiful, gorgeous Italian food. It was amazing. It was really a magical venue, magical place, magical location to eat dinner. It was just it was just breathtakingly beautiful. We had dinner every night, every evening in this restaurant. But by about evening four or five, it was still an amazing location, but it just seemed normal now. You know, the breathtaking mountains in the background were just kind of, yeah, they're, they're, they're cool mountains. They, it wasn't so breathtaking anymore. Still beautiful, still idyllic, but just, you know, the pizzazz, the magic, the sparkle, the shine had kind of diminished. And this is just what happens. You know, this is just what happens. Same with people you meet. Maybe you meet someone you think this person is the most amazing person in the world. But then as you get to know them, that changes. Perhaps. So, um, Things change, things are temporary, they end, they come and go, they change, you will change, tolerance. Another thing is anxiety and fear. If you have a car, you might be afraid that someone's gonna take that car from you. If you meet the man or woman of your dreams, you might suddenly start thinking, well, hang on a sec, maybe this person doesn't wanna be with me anymore, you know? Maybe someone's gonna take them from me. So you get what you become worried about losing your objects. You could lose them. You could lose your car. Someone could steal your car. Someone could scratch your car. Someone could take your job. You could lose your job, whatever it is. Maybe people respect you in society. Maybe you, you know, you're a very well-respected person and that's your object. That makes you feel good. You know, that respect could go. Your name could be tarnished. Your reputation could be tarnished. And even if it isn't, even if your car doesn't go, you could be afraid of losing these things. Even if your husband or wife are never going to leave you, you might don't know that. You might be afraid of it. And this fear will cause suffering. So you have to contemplate this one teaching. Well, you don't have to, but I encourage you to contemplate on this one teaching. Can objects make you happy? Happiness does not come from the object. Just as the dog didn't get happiness from the bone, but from himself. You don't get happiness from an object. The happiness you get from the object is actually from within. Even physiologically speaking, this is true. There isn't happiness inside a car. 
that you can take it out of the car and put it in you, put it in you. Happiness comes from within you. If you want to look at it in a biological level, you can say it's neurotransmitters in the brain, something in the nervous system, chemicals in the nervous system. The happiness comes from within. If happiness came from the object, then if you had twice as many objects, you'd be twice as happy. In pharmacology, that's called dose-dependent response. You know, if you have one Ferrari, you're happy, but you have two Ferraris, you should be twice as happy. Right? That doesn't happen, does it? So show you the happiness doesn't come from the object. Now, the reason we tend to objects is because we think we need them to, for us to be happy. We don't. Bhagavan Shret tells us, when you're in deep sleep, there are no objects there, you're in bliss. You're in happiness. Not an object there. Whether you're a prince or a pauper or a princess or a pauper, when you go to sleep at night when you go to bed at night and fall asleep and go to deep sleep it's the same and liberation is like that whether you're very sophisticated and good looking and or intelligent and skilled or not none of those things doesn't make a difference for liberation all that becomes nothing now i just want to take this teaching a little bit deeper When you attend to objects, attending to objects cannot give you happiness. Does everyone understand that? I hope so. <laughs> I might have mentioned that today already, <laughs> once or twice. Your feelings are objects. This is how I want to take it deeper. Your thinking is an object. Thoughts, meaning thoughts in your head. Your thinking is an object. Can, when we attend to our thoughts, that's called thinking. What's it called when we attend to our thoughts? It's called thinking. So can attending and thoughts are objects, they come and go. So can attending to your thoughts ever give you happiness? They're temporary. They come and go, they're fleeting. Almost every seeker of liberation is attend, trying to find happiness through attending to their thoughts, also known as thinking. How on earth are thoughts, how on earth is thinking going to make you happy? If you think thoughts can make you happy, it's the same as thinking a Ferrari is going to make you happy. Who here, who here thinks collecting Ferraris is going to make them happy? Only Diana, but we knew she's superficial anyway. So apart from Diana... I wouldn't mind a Ferrari. If anyone wants to um, forego their PayPal payment and donate a Ferrari, that'd be fine. I didn't just say that, did I? I didn't say that out loud, did I? Diana, I'm with you. Diana and I, and I always share lots of synchronicities. Uh, I didn't know it extended to Ferraris too. Next, next she'll be telling me she likes chocolate cake. The reason I say that is just because often I use the analogy of chocolate cake or Ferrari when I'm talking about objects and happiness. I'll often talk about chocolate cake and Ferrari and the Ferrari. These things are not going to lead to lasting satisfaction. They may lead to relative happiness, temporary happiness. 
but um it's funny actually um i know a few people who have ferraris not that many and they're not they're not that much happier actually same with the people i know who eat chocolate cake but hopefully most of us realize even as we're gorging on chocolate cake or wishing we were in a ferrari most of us realize that these things are not actually going to deliver liberation lasting freedom right we know that we know that these things do not give us lasting happiness but we're still attending to our thoughts why are we attending to our thoughts how is a thought going to make us happy do you think that if you if if these thought words are rearranged are arranged in a certain if you get a certain number of thought words in a certain order like scrabble or something that that's going to suddenly do something for you do you see is this working is this taking the teaching a, a de, a, to a deeper level we're attending to objects i the reason i wanted to spend so long talking about objects today was well, so it's really drummed in and then i can talk about thoughts thoughts are an object feelings are objects do you think thinking which is attending to a subtle object is going to ever lead to liberation it's like a ferrari you'll be happy you can have you can have a ride in a ferrari you'll be happy for a bit same with thinking you can think some thoughts about this or that and it'll make you feel good do you think that ferrari is ever going to give you liberation no but do you think thinking is ever going to give you liberation maybe you do maybe you do think that oh if i think about something in a certain way or figure something out attend to my thoughts this is going to give me freedom no as long as you are attending to your thoughts why do you attend to your thoughts it goes back to the first question i asked that demetrius answered why do you attend to objects the answer we we came to was we tend to objects because we think they're going to make us happy why do you tend to your objects the subtle objects called thoughts because you think it's going to make you happy give you liberation now i do want you to think about this i do want you to contemplate this if you need to you need to contemplate this i would suggest if you are thinking a lot and trying to discover the truth through thinking which is no different to trying to be liberated through eating chocolate cake there's no difference between trying to be liberated through chocolate cake as through thinking ultimately 